let's get into our player ratings for the game and we'll start off with uh vicario i gave him a seven brian gives him a six um didn't really have too much to do but burnley only had one shot on target throughout the 90 minutes um it was a fairly routine save as well if i remember rightly from uh like 25 yards i think it was a pretty routine save from um vicario i think his passing was actually really good a couple of occasions actually um, he had he had these really nice passes over the top of the Burnley defence, finding Brennan Johnson and putting us in a quite promising positions, which I haven't seen with Vicario that much. That those kind of passes, um, I thought what he had to do, he did well. Um, but yeah, it was a fairly quiet day on the uh, shot saving front. Yeah, that's the only reason I gave him a six. I'm not going to give him a five because I've never given him a five because he's definitely not average. Um, yeah, one save to make, he made it. His distribution was good. It was a very very quiet day for Vicario. So that's. Uh, by no means me saying he had a bad game. He just had very, very minimal things to do. Mm, completely agree. Uh, next up, we're going to go with Pedro Parro. I gave him an eight. Brian gives him a nine. Obviously, the match winner on the day. What an unbelievable goal he did score. Brilliant finish from uh, 25 yards, which was the only moment of real quality which won us the game. What I would say is before that goal... I don't think he was actually having one of his best games. I don't think he was terrible, but I don't th like. I think his set pieces were a bit poor. Um, some of his corners um, didn't quite uh, reach the, the 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 intended target. Some of his free kicks as well. Basically, his set piece delivery wasn't uh, as it as it usually is. Um, in general play, he did have a couple of hairy moments playing out from the back, but in general he was pretty good. Um, I thought a couple of occasions he he did did have some good deliveries from wide areas. I remember one cross he set up Brendan Johnson for a volley, which uh, he put wide. But obviously he gets a massive mark up for a brilliant goal he scored. That's exactly why he's got the nine for me. Listen, uh, like I said, his corners were concerning, but let's face it, we, we've had problems with corners for years and years and years since Ericsson. Madison obviously out. I've given him that mark because I just think he's becoming so influential. Mm. He is. Do you know what? I, I, I'm putting him up there with... with uh, if, if he if, if Pentacle hadn't been capped in, I think this guy is in with a huge, huge shout. The influence he's having, the passion, rallying up the crowd. He, he, he's doing it all. Yes, uh, his set pieces were poor, but you mentioned the great cross for Brennan Johnson's volley. Um, he, he's just uh, incredible. And that, that finish was more than a point worthy. Um, it was just sensational. I, I think there could have been two goalkeepers in the goal and they wouldn't have <laughs> moved for it. It was just a thing of beauty. So, so for me, he's getting man of the match. And he's almost become our like uh, go-to creative force in Madison's absence, isn't he? He's like, our, like I, I think he's probably second in line now. When, while, while Madison's away, he's like become our most creative player, hasn't he? And that just goes to yep. show what quality he has. Um, next up... Emerson Royale, we both gave him eights. I thought pretty impeccable performance from him. Um, Burnley couldn't get past him. I thought they really struggled uh, to get in behind him. Um, I actually won one of the biggest things as well is the amount of headers he won. He was so good in the air, especially from Burnley goal kicks. He was go gobbling up every header that they threw at him. Um, very aerially dominant on the day. Um, and I thought on the floor, uh, made some really good tackles. I thought supported the team really well. Um, didn't really put a foot wrong. So, good performance from Emerson. Uh, I'm with you as well. What, what what did surprise me more was his uh, anticipation of where the ball was going to be, his uh, his runs off the ball. He had, listen, a lot of people will fire shots at him when he's poor. Um, but we got to give him credit where the, the whole back line were fantastic uh, yesterday. And he had a huge part in that. So, a very well-deserved date. Yeah, completely agree. Um, and his partner, Ben Davis, also both gave him eights. Did pick up a little injury um, at the back end of the game, but doing a really nice slide challenge. But again, another strong showing from Ben Davis. Um, they did really well to keep out the Burnley front line of Amdunia and uh, Foster. Um, I thought on the ball as well, he was confident. He was charging. He was uh, confident to go into midfield and play some nice passes into uh, Ben Tancor. Um yeah, I was really happy with him. I thought he put in a really strong showing. Uh, again, Ben Davis. Again, this man over the last couple or since Van der Ven's injury has had to come in. And yes, he's had his odd moments where he's been poor or decisions. He's been caught off uh, a yard short pace or whatever. But you cannot deny just how vital he's been uh, in the absence. No one would have thought he'd have been as good as, as what he's done. at The left, left centre back in a two, not in a three. And yesterday he put in a, 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 an incredible performance. And even, uh, like I said to you, when I came on the show with uh, you and Barnaby, 
the injury he picked up at the end was really struggling, couldn't come off because we made all our subs. Someone you want in the trenches with you that will always give everything he's got, and he deserves an eight yesterday. I think him and um, Emerson together did uh, the club proud. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. And he look, he always gives hundred percent, doesn't he? Uh, next up, Destiny Udogi eights all round again. Um, really strong, uh, especially first half. I thought they really couldn't contain him. He just got his supreme physicality. Is something I'll never get bored of watching. Just the way he charges past people and they just can't do anything about it and even when they try and foul him they can't do anything about it because he's so strong um that it takes pr probably two men uh to bring him down uh he's that big but um i thought he was a massive threat as well going forward i thought they were really struggling to contain him um defensively he had them on lockdown um i did think he maybe wasn't as effective in the second half but i thought first half was really great and uh really good really good performance again from him his athleticism, I, I can't remember having a, someone on our left-hand side like this for athleticism since Gareth Bale. This mm. man is a machine. And there was one point, you said he was quiet in the second half, and he did He did go, uh, he was a little bit quiet, but there was one incident where he'd made a tackle or, or Ben Davies had uh, in our own penalty box and Ben da and Adoji was next, Adoji was next to him. And then we went on the counter. And you just saw Destiny running past people like <laughs> Roadrunner. Like, literally, it was like people were in slow motion and he was just whizzing past them. This man's athleticism, this man's stamina, this man's aggression, this man's power, this man's... He's a breath of fresh air to not just Spurs, to the Premier League. And I think he was brilliant yesterday. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, such a look, and, and it's unbelievable the level of consistency he shows for such a young player. Uh, it's quite incredible, and um, what a find we have here in Destiny and Doggy. I'm so happy with him, and uh, honestly, I couldn't be happier with any left back. Even if we'd even if we'd signed him for 100 million, I would be delighted with his performances. But the fact we got him, you know, for a you know for a good for a cheap deal, and uh, he's so young. You know, uh, it's, it's incredible. Um, I'll just add to that very quickly, Simon, just very, very quickly with this. We're, after Brighton, when Ange came out and said we were tired, yes, he's had a suspension or two, but this man doesn't look tired at all. Mm. This man could look like he could carry on and carry on and carry on. His recovery seems to be in incredible as well. And I think, was it this game that Paul O'Keefe even said before, he might have even had a tight hamstring yeah. and might not even be playing. So if that's how he played with a suspected tight hamstring... Um, imagine how he's playing when he's fully recovered. It's He's just a joy to watch. 100%. Uh, next up, Rodrigo Bentancourt. I gave him an 8. Brian gives him a 7. Um, I thought he had a really strong showing for the majority of the game. Obviously, he did go off after 18 minutes. But what I loved about Bentancourt is he has that little bit of quality that the other midfielders didn't have just to play these quick first time passes into the front three to get to get our attacking play going and i really felt uh, all our good attacking moments did come through bentencourt those first time passes were absolutely fantastic and obviously he was captain on the day as well i thought defensively it was brilliant there was one moment as well he did a lovely pirouette in the central midfield to get get in the middle of two Burnley midfielders. I thought when um, I thought for the majority of the game he was absolutely brilliant. Did seem to tire late on, and that's maybe part of the reason he was brought off. But I thought when it comes to our midfield, he's a step above the rest. Oh, that he most definitely was. The only reason I've gone down, uh, given him a mark uh, less than you, is because, like I said, I think the midfield just weren't uh, the strongest unit. I think the the defense by far was and. Like you said, he seems to tire at the end and he is on another level. And unfortunately, the, the players around him weren't on the same wavelength as him in this game. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's the only reason that he's gone down a mark for me is because I just think the defenders stood out and they deserve the top marks. Absolutely. Um, next up, Oli Skip. We both gave him fives here. Uh, really poor from Oli Skip, to be honest. A big opportunity again for him to stake a claim for the first team. Apologies, and he didn't take it again. He was found wanting of quality. Obviously, the hard work and endeavor is never in doubt, but even on that front, I'm not saying he didn't work hard, but he just seemed a bit off it, even off the ball, not making as many challenges as he should have, um, getting caught uh, out of position. Um, he did have one moment of quality, he played quite a nice through ball to Richarlison, who snapped at a shot um, and uh, put it wide. But I just feel like whenever he's on the ball, I never really have the confidence that something's going to spark into life or something's going to happen and he's going to find that moment of quality and more often than not 
um, he gives the ball away and the move breaks down or the move slows down at the very least. Um, so, yeah, game of five. Yeah, the only thing I can say on that is, like I said to you when we were doing the uh, the review of the game, is I remember one lot overhit pass from him in the first half and then him coming off the bench. Oh, sorry, going on the bench, uh, being subbed off. I can't remember a single thing he did and as much as I want him to succeed, I just don't see him in the end system. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I don't think... Uh... I just yeah, I don't think he's that suited to playing the football that we want. But look, I'm 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 rooting for him. I really hope he can improve, and maybe with time that will happen. But I don't know if he'll get the time with the, the midfielders, you know, back at the in in uh, mid February, and um, you know th- these games are crucial for him. Is my point? Like he's got to really be sub um, staking a claim in these games. Otherwise, he's going to be out the team again, and he's not right. going to get that opportunity. Um, Next up, Giovanni Lo Celso. Both gave him sixes. I don't think it was a terrible performance. He did spend a lot of this game on the floor, I felt, um, looking for free yep. kicks and trying to buy things. And half the time, the referee wasn't buying it, and it was quite frustrating. Did have a few nice moments, um, a bit of quality in and in the pockets of space that he did find. Um, did force one save out of the goalkeeper with a long-range effort. Uh, it was a pretty routine save. Um, he's had better games. I thought it was much better against Bournemouth. Um so yeah, it was wasn't his best. Bit frustrating, but still had a few moments in there to look out for. Yeah, the, the, the way I look at Gio is it, you've got the elegant side of him and you've got the work rate side of him. Bournemouth, we saw the elegance. This one was the work rate. Burnley were obviously coming here to 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 ruffle some feathers and be physical. Every time Gio went down, though, I'm like, oh, here we go. Every mm. time he goes, he's the one player that if he goes down and stays down, I'm like, uh oh. Um, they, they 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 kept him quiet, but he, he he put himself in positions to get fouls and win fouls for us. But like I said, it was more the uh, the hard working display more than the elegant, and uh, didn't do uh, that much to impact the game. Yeah, yeah, agree with that. Uh, next up, Rushalton. We both give him fives. A uh, bit of an anonymous performance. Obviously, he had those two early chances early on, uh, Rushalton, um, where both on his left foot, one of them. He skewed badly wide after being played in from Skip. The other one, I think Bentancur played him in, or maybe it was Gio, and uh, the shot went straight to the keeper. Um, wasn't the best finish as well. Did struggle to get into the game. I thought his hold-up play was pretty poor in uh, overall. Um, I thought in general it's been better um, better in recent games, but I thought it was a bit of reversion in this game. Um, second half, he was pretty anonymous. He had one, he pretty much had one opening and that was just before the goal and he yep. screwed up, didn't he? Uh, kind of somehow put his foot over the ball, allowed the goalkeeper to uh, gobble it up and um, luckily for him, the goalkeeper played it quickly and Porro intercepted and scored. Um, if it wasn't for that, we would have uh, probably been ruining some of his missed chances even more. So a bit lucky on the day. Yeah, it wasn't a great performance from Rishi. Uh, didn't really get involved too much. He tried. He did run in behind a bit, but definitely wasn't as good as uh, some of his other recent performances. Yeah, listen, I, with, with Richardson, again, I think he, he so heavily did... When you've got people like Son or whatever that can create something out of nothing, Richie isn't one of those, in my mm. opinion. He needs someone to create something for him, make it happen, and it just wasn't happening yesterday. Just was that when he did have a chance, he had another one that he he keeps snatching the shot wide, doesn't he? He likes to drag that shot when he's when he's through, which he did again. He needs to work on. Um, he made his work rate was good, like it always is. You you guaranteed that with Richie, but uh, he just faded and faded as the game went on, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think he did, and uh, he was even taken off. Dane Scarlett came on, uh, had a bit of a run out in place of him, so. It was not a great performance from Rishi. Next up, Dejan Kulisevsky, fives again all round. Uh, yeah, it was one of his poorer games, unfortunately, for Dejan. Um, obviously a big fan of his, but um, didn't really impact the game, especially the first half he was on the right-hand side, wasn't seeing much of the ball. He had a couple of occasions where he cut inside, but both his shots were blocked and had another occasion where he cut inside and shot and it went, went over the bar. Um, he then got his chance to move centrally once... Uh, Brennan Johnson moved over to the right. And I even then thought even then he struggled to impact the game again. Uh, he was getting on the ball a bit, but wasn't able to really impact the game in an attacking sense like like we've seen him do. So, um, yeah, fives, unfortunately, for him wasn't, wasn't really his most impactful game. Yeah, for, for me, where I am with uh, Dejan Kulisevsky right now, for me personally, is we just need to say, right, you're going to play in this position and this is your position for Spurs and you're going to keep playing there 
and I'm hoping that is in competition in the the centre and midfield as a as a ten alongside Madison or or whatever we pretend to play because this constant moving him about. Yes, I understand it could be because he can work on this defender or fullback, and but it's just not working. It's just not working. There's games where he sticks in a position and has a huge impact, or we move all over the place trying to force him to have an impact, and it's just not working. Don't get me wrong, he works his heart out. He runs his socks off. He There's no doubt in that, but I think we're, we're not getting the best out of Kulisevsky because we just can't identify the best position for him in an iron system. I personally think it's in the uh, 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 number 10 position, but we'll have to wait and see. But moving him all about the place, trying to get his influence, I don't think it's working, Sim. Yeah, um, maybe it's too much change at the moment for him. I wonder yeah. if the Werner deal, if it comes off, what if that, if that means we're going to see more of Kulu in this in his central position rather than out wide. Uh, I, I, I would think so as well. So that will be interesting. Um Last of the starting 11 is Brendan Johnson. Six is all round. I actually thought on the day was probably our brightest attacker. Probably says more about the attack than him, but I think that is true. For some reason, he's the one who's come under for most criticism, but I thought when he was on the left-hand side, again, getting in such dangerous positions and looking threatening, but unfortunately didn't really... Um, he looked threatening, but never really took the game to uh, to to Burnley. He had that one effort where he cut inside and shot forced a good save out of the keeper. He was the one who was running in behind and causing a lot of trouble for uh, the Burnley back line. But again, I feel like some there are some occasions where he's got all that space to run into, especially on the outside, and doesn't really go for it. Doesn't open his legs and just try to burn them for pace. But um, yeah, I think once he moved to the right, looked a bit more comfortable on the right-hand side. But... I, uh, I think he was maybe tiring at that point um, and never really was able to cause too many problems in the last 20 minutes or so for, for the Burnley back line. But I think if anyone was going to... Uh, he did have a few shots, didn't he? A few volleys. One volley yep. forced to save out of the keeper. One of them he miscued quite wide. But it did seem, I have to say, if anyone was going to get on the score sheet or make something happen, it did seem it was going to be him. Like, like, like we said earlier... What... I think if Brennan Johnson gets in these wide spaces last season at Notts Forest or even this, he goes past the player. He has the confidence. He runs past. He scored a lot of his goals last season doing precisely that. Um, I think he's come to Tottenham and his confidence, just whether he thinks he should do it or if he can do it. Um, I, I really am backing this guy to come good. And like you said, he did look the brightest of that three. If you look at the chances that he had, whether he should have taken them or not, it's another thing, but at least he's getting there. Um, and it's just, he just needs that one thing to go right. And then I think we, we we start talking about a different Brendan Johnson. And hopefully that comes against United. But like you said, Simeon, I think it was the brightest of a bad bunch uh, yesterday. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, okay. Ne and um, next up from the substitutes, we got Pierre Emil Hoybier. I gave him a five. Brian, oh, I, I, I gave him a six. Brian gave him a six. I did, uh, yeah, I should, you're right. It was my bad. I didn't tell Sammy that you gave him a six. Apologies. Um, I actually thought he had a really bad cameo. Actually, um, I thought it was one of his worst. Um, his worst cameos. Uh, there we go. Um, Cheers, Sammy. I, I was. Uh, I thought he was doing some really stupid passes, and there was one near the end where he plays a blind square pass straight to a Burnley player and sets him up on an attack on a counter attack, which passed in trouble. Um, really, really poor from uh, Pierre Mohoybier, to be honest. And uh, I was very frustrated with him. Um, yeah, it nearly cost us in the end. Yeah, listen, Hoybier came on and I, I, I prefer it when he comes off the, the bench because he can see what we need to do to impact the game rather than Skip coming on. I think Hoybier gives you more options. Uh, he's got up a point for me because of that block when Bain Davis was injured to set up the corner right at the end. Um, I think if he's not there, we may be talking one all on a trip to Turf Moor. Um, again, I'm hearing reports that he just stormed down the dressing room um, straight after the game. I think he wants out. I think it's quite clear. But he came on, had a job to do, and thankfully he made that block. And that's why I gave him a six. And see oh, yeah, you two yeah. seconds again. I'll be back yeah, in two seconds. Two. No worries. Yeah, that was a good block. It's a, it's a fair point from uh, from Brian Daigle. That that was a uh, you know definitely right at the end there. That was a hairy moment, and Hoybier was able to uh, 
uh, prevent uh, what would have been um, a, a replay, uh, essentially. So um, he stormed out, did he? Is that what people were saying? Is that what Brian said? Um, obviously, we'll touch on some of the other subs. Uh, Scarlett came on, Sessegnon, Donnelly and Brian Hill. Um, we're not going to give them the ratings because they weren't on for that long, but Sessegnon probably looked the brightest, albeit uh, did struggle to really impact the game. Scarlett was putting himself about. Jamie Donnelly um, did struggle when he was on the ball, I think, physically uh, against a lot of the uh, Burnley Burnley players. Um, didn't really, uh, wasn't able to affect the game. Uh, Brian Hill, um, Brian Hill looked a bit tricky. I'm just touching on the subs, Brian. Um, the yep. other subs we're not going to rate. Uh, what did you make out of some of the youngsters who came on? Delighted for Jamie Donnelly. Delighted. Just give me a second. Um, so I'm just going to my, my uh, laptop just needs to put it on charge. You, you do. Right? Listen, well, when it comes to it, let's run through them then. Jamie Donnelly, we've been wanting to see minutes against Brighton. He was about to come on and Ange uh, told him to sit back down. I think that happened at Bournemouth as well. We've all been crying out to, to see what this young kid has to offer us and came on and got a few minutes. So very, very happy to see Jamie Donnelly do that. When it comes to Dane Scarlett, I'm actually a big fan of his. I've, I've spoken on this channel about him before. But now you look at it when it comes to, to Scarlett, you've got a lot of strikers that are coming through, haven't you? We've got so many. Now Werner coming in as well. Um, I think he had to get some minutes in, and he did. And uh, the biggest miracle is we saw Ryan Sessignon come off a pitch, come on a pitch, and also walk off it as well. So uh, miracles <laughs> do happen. Um, yeah, in terms of Session, he's come under a lot of criticism for his cameo. Obviously, he didn't really get a goal. There was a couple of occasions yeah. where I felt like he could have done a bit more, take on his man, be a bit more confident. But considering it's his first game back after, you know, over a year, or nearly a year, is it, uh, for Sessegnon, um, I feel like people are being very harsh on him. Well, well, first of all, Sessegnon, when, when you look back at the replays, that goal that people say he almost scored, that would have gone out for a throw-in or a goal kick it was going that wide. So, <laughs> yes, it was a deflection which took it closer, but uh, if that shot had been left without getting the touch, it would have been well, 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 well wide. Um, Simeon, you and I went to the Nottingham Forest game in the Carabao Cup when we lost 2-0 when I just arrived from mm -hmm. Toronto. And it, the performance from Sessignon was abysmal. Absolutely abysmal, as were a lot of the players. Um on that day. And listen, this guy just hasn't cut it at Tottenham Hotspur. And unfortunately, and I'm one of them, um, have said that his performances have been very, very poor when he has been there, but he hasn't had any fitness. So he, he came on, he looked quite bright, didn't do anything to, to, to write home about, but uh, it's another player that we have fit. How long for is a different question. Um, but the players are starting to come back now. I don't see how anyone, including myself, could say, oh, he had a poor, oh my God, he was bad came on for like seven minutes or something like that. What, 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 what can you say for him? Just, he's on the pitch. How long, how much longer till he gets another injury is up for debate. Um, but it's another body back. And last but not least, we're going to rate Ange. We both gave him sevens. Obviously, we look, we played the strongest lineup. So delighted with that and uh, um, delighted that he took the cup as serious as possible. It's probably the reason we went through. I do think he would, if he would have rested players in this one, we might be sitting here on, on the end of a of a bad shock, to be honest. So I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that he was there, that he did take it very very seriously. Um, in terms of how he managed the game, uh, making the subs and whatnot, he did try and change things, and it wasn't working. Maybe at half time, he you know considering it wasn't really working at half time, could he have maybe tried Kulisevsky on the left hand side and Brendan on the right? I don't understand why he. Uh, is so adamant of not trying Kulisevsky on the left. I really thought this was a good opportunity to do that, but he didn't. Um, he did put Brennan on the right uh, um, late in the game. Um, yeah. I thought, yeah, I thought he he uh, obviously brought on the youngsters late on, uh, and Mahi, which was a good experience for them in a high pressure situation. So that will only do doing the world of good. Um, so I thought he managed the game okay. We ended up getting the win, but. Um, yeah, I don't think he was. He did anything special, but you know, did everything we asked him to. That's it. That's it. You see, you see that last that sentence was it. He done everything we wanted him to do. We got through. The main thing was getting through the game, clean sheet, which uh, are few and far between at the moment. Also, uh, the only thing, like you said, we predicted Kulisewski might be given a chance on the left. He wasn't. 
But most important thing was get through to the next round of the FA Cup. We wanted to see youngsters. We saw youngsters. Um, and we go into the next round of the FA Cup. So uh, nothing, it wasn't the most fluid of performances, but the job got done. Yeah, absolutely. So that is our player ratings for the FA Cup third round against Burnley. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you agreed with our ratings and what you, you would have rated um, all those players.